Hi, good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for joining us today. Using Dialine's digital platform and investor tools, I'm going to show you how to quickly and easily find worthwhile investment candidates. Going further, I'm going to recommend one stock to buy right now. Um, as mentioned earlier, after the presentation, we have a lot of time for questions and answers. Thus, if you have any questions, please type them into the Q&A box, and I will get to them at the end. To start, I thought it best to provide a brief overview of who we are at ValueLine. We are a New York headquartered corporation that has been providing investment research for more than 85 years. Our flagship product is the ValueLine Investment Survey. This service is a unique source of financial information and is designed to help investors make informed investment decisions that fit their individual goals and levels of risk. The product includes data, information, and analysis on more than 1,700 equities that trade on the New York Stock Exchange, NASDAQ, and Toronto Exchange. It also includes economic commentary, easy-to-follow model portfolios, stock screens, industry-based analysis, and much more. This service, which is published weekly, is created by Valueline's research department, which is comprised of more than 70 analysts, economists, data experts, and quantitative specialists. Our research is completely unbiased and independent. Unlike many Wall Street brokerage firms, Valueline has no investment banking business with any company, including the 1,700 that are included in this service. Valueline does not execute trades for its subscribers and therefore has no vested interest in whether our subscribers buy, sell, or hold a specific equity. What's more, our staff of professional securities analysts are not permitted to own shares of any company that they cover. Before I begin the formal presentation, I thought it worthwhile to include an overview of the economic situation, as well as the Dialon Research Department's view of the stock market. The following content was prepared by Harvey Katz, Dialon's chief economist. There have been a few small bump, bumps in the road recently, with the latest month's figures showing some early spring volume slippage at the car makers, eased output in manufacturing, and softness in housing starts, but surprising strength in home sales. However, the big picture hasn't changed. True, after spotting this early in the year and a few weather-related pressures later on in the opening quarter, the expectation had been that activity would quicken as we neared mid-year. And that might still be the case. But the somewhat mixed trends cited above and the uncertain outcome of legislative actions aimed at economic reform in Washington suggest that any uptick in business activity in the spring and summer will be moderate. Wall Street continues to get support from corporate America, and that is helping some key averages secure new milestones. To date, the vast majority of those companies already reporting their earnings have surpassed expectations. Indeed, the few high-profile high misses, which have rattled investors, have been overwhelmed by those companies posting better-than-expected results. Not surprisingly, the focus is back on Washington, where Congress and the White House are again attempting to fashion an overhaul of the health care system and generate momentum for tax reform. To date, the going has been slow amid the physiological divide in the capital. Sorry, philosophical divide in the capital. Looking ahead, the pace and scope of legislative action, which could be affected by the weak first quarter GDP showing, may have a bearing on the strength of the long-running but uneven economic expansion. A recent small victory was secured as Congress and the White House have reached an agreement on funding the government through its fiscal year. The international temperature has cooled slightly. Political uncertainty eased for the moment, though it is still a fact of life in France. Tensions remain high with North Korea, and issues have popped up regarding Turkey and the Philippines. So far, Wall Street is taking much of this in stride, but that could change if the international situation deteriorates notably. In conclusion, with the economy continuing to edge forward and interest rates low enough to keep competition from bonds at bay, it is hard to see the bull, the bull market ending. But P-E ratios are extended, so additional gains, albeit possible, may not be secured easily. Now for the core presentation. As you can as you can see, I'm currently at our homepage, ValueLine.com. On this page, you can access 
free of charge, daily market commentaries, as well as general interest articles that are written by our analysts. I am now going to sign in with my username and password. After entering my credentials, I am taken to the welcome screen. From here, I can quickly get to many important areas of our website, including Browse Research, which is the main home for our core equities products. I can also head to our investor tools, as well as the home pages for our monthly stock selection services. Since the goal for today is to find a worthwhile investment candidate, I'm going to start with the screener. Individual subscribers are entitled to a number of value line preset screens, as well as 50 data fields. Please note, however, that almost 200 more fields are available, but require a higher level of subscription. For this exercise, my focus will be a popular investment strategy, which should interest many of you on the call today. As Harvey Katz mentioned above in his stock market commentary, and I quote, PE ratios are extended, so additional gains, albeit possible, may be secured, may not be secured easily. Let's use that opinion to find a worthwhile stock to buy right now. More specifically, I'm going to find one that trades at a reasonable price to earnings multiple, is relatively safe, and possesses favorable growth prospects so that it would participate in the bull rally should it continue. Simply put, my plan is to find a conservative stock with upside. I'm going to start with Value Line's proprietary safety rank. The safety rank measures the total risk of a stock and is arranged on a one to five scale, with one being the least risky issues. I want to highlight the fact that stocks ranked favorably for safety have, in the past, held up far better than the broader market during corrections and downturns. For this, let's focus on stocks that are risk profiles that are better than average. So I click on the one and two. As you can see, 459 stocks meet that criteria. I'm now going to tackle the PE side of things. Each week, Dialine publishes the median price to earnings ratio of all stocks with earnings in our 1700 stock universe. This week, that figure is a lofty 20.1. For reference, six months ago, the median PE was 18.3, and at the market low in March 2009, it was just 10.3. Obviously, we have come a long way from the financial crisis. Since I'm looking for a conservative stock, I'm going to set the high bound at 15, or well below the universe median. I can do this by moving the sliding bar or simply typing the name in the box provided. This will display a list of stocks that are trading at relatively low PEs. Also, I, I want to only focus on companies that are meaningfully profitable. Thus, I'm going to set the lower end at five. Down to 55 stocks. We are making progress, but it is still far too many. Next, many conservative investors prefer to invest in companies that pay dividends. At present, the average yield for dividend-paying stocks in our universe is around 2%. Let's add that field and set 2% as the minimum. We now have 37 options. To make sure we are focusing on companies that are growing, I'm going to utilize value lines proprietary estimates and projections. All of these figures are created in-house by our research team. From the screener list, I'm going to select projected three to five year EPS growth rate. This is the expected average annual growth of share earnings calculated by our analysts. I'm going to set the minimum bound at 8%, which is a healthy rate. Overall, companies that are expected to achieve this rate or close to it should be firmly in growth mode. Okay, seven results, which is a pretty manageable list. Any of these seven stocks may well fit nicely in an equity portfolio that wants to balance risk and reward. Now, if you're like me, you tend to watch a batch of stocks for a few days or weeks before seriously considering taking a position. Value Line's watch list tool makes this easy. I can access watch lists from the menu above. 
To save time, I have already created the watch list for these stocks, but the process is very quick and easy. Simply click on Create Watch List and follow the steps. A quick scan of the stocks shows that only CVS is ranked favorably for both timeliness and safety. For those that don't know, ValueLine's ranking system for timeliness is a quantitative model that predicts relative price performance for the next 6 to 12 months. Like safety, it is on an easy-to-use scale of 1 to 5, with 1 being our top rank. CVS also holds other investment merits, and I'm going to take you through a few of those now. Let's click on the company name and get more information about this issue. I am now on CVS's digital stock report, where the data, information, and analysis is arranged in more than 15 modules or boxes. These modules can be moved around, resized, or hidden, so you can create your own customized stock reports. For instance, let's say I'm most interested in the analyst commentary. I can simply click and drag that box to the top. In addition, now I want to see more rank-related information. For that, I simply click on the larger rectangle in the heading. Once I alter the presentation, I can save the changes from the sliding horizontal action bar. The next time I come to this doc report, it will look the way I set it up. Now let's get some background information in regard to CVS's business and prospects. Some of you probably already know, CVS Health has struggled of late. In the most recent analyst commentary, editorial analyst, analyst Andre Costanza had the following to say. This is likely to be a tough year for CVS Health from an operating perspective. Although the company closed out 2016 in solid fashion, management reaffirmed its soft guidance for 2017, calling for share earnings of $5.77 to $5.83. The high end of this range would mark a decline despite the likelihood of aggressive share of purchases. The farming services provider is pinning its gloomy outlook on success from rival Walgreens Boots Alliance in regarding to signing deals that make its pharmacies part of a preferred network. Specifically, CVS believes that Walgreens affluence in this area will cost it $40 million in prescriptions this year. With this in mind, we are maintaining our $5.85 earnings per share forecast and trimming $3 billion from our top line estimate to call for just a 4% advance. By contrast, CVS has averaged 10% annual sales growth over the prior five years. Growth is likely to pick up in 2018. Our inaugural share net forecast looks for a high single digit advance on a mid single digit sales gain. We think that CVS will be able to use its size and scale to regain its footing and better compete for future contracts despite the above mentioned hurdles. Margin improvement plays a role too, as is on ongoing share buybacks. As for the stock, as mentioned, it has not performed well of late. In fact, over the past year, the stock price has declined more than 20%. For comparison, the S&P 500 index has registered a gain of about 15% over the same time frame. In our view, the underperformance has created an excellent entry point for investors. At the top of our digital report, you will notice that our three to five year target price range for CVS is 130 to 155. <coughs> this suggests significant recovery potential to that period. A 2.4% dividend yield is another plus. All told, CVS has had a rough time, but the stock appears poised to meaningfully rebound over the months and years ahead. It is particularly attractive on a risk-adjusted basis. For those that are familiar with our classic one-page stock reports, subscribers also receive these as part of the digital package. The most recent report, along with our historical analysis, can be accessed via the link on the top right. Simply select the date of the report you want to access. As an example, I will open the most recent CBS report. I hope you found the process for finding a stock to buy right now interesting, informative, and efficient. I also want to point out, however, that ValueLine offers a variety of model portfolios that can help alleviate the work of finding worthwhile investment candidates altogether. Part of the ValueLine Investment Survey is the weekly selection and opinion newsletter. 
along with economic and stock market commentary and data, are four model portfolios. Each one has a def different investment strategy, is actively managed, updated each week, and always contains 20 stocks. The portfolios are overseen by senior research analysts. Portfolio one is best suited for aggressive investors and focuses on stocks that are expected to outperform the broader market over the year ahead. Portfolio two should be of interest to more conservative investors and focuses on dividend paying stocks that offer worthwhile appreciation potential. Portfolio three chooses equities. Well, let me just get to that. There we are. Portfolio three chooses equities with long-term price growth potential and, of course, is best suited for patient investors. Portfolio four is filled with stocks that possess above-average dividend yields and is for investors seeking current income. We have a great number of subscribers that follow these portfolios. For those interested in possibly adopting one of these strategies, here are a few helpful details. New positions always amount to 5% of the market value of the prospective portfolio at the time of the trade. Any dividends received are simply taken as cash. They are not reinvested. Lastly, the portfolios are not rebalanced. All told, the model portfolios represent some of ValueLine's research department's best investing ideas, and we recommend that you read the analyst-created content and look over the portfolios for possible additions to your holdings. Subscribers looking for a total investing solution are also encouraged to check out our monthly stock selection services, Value Line Select, Dividend Income and Growth, and Special Situations. If this is something that sounds up your alley, please call 1-800-VALUE-LINE for a free sample report. This marks the end of the formal presentation, and I will now take your question. So there's quite a bit of chatter, so just give me one second. Okay. Uh, question one. Um, in your analysis, does value line use GAAP or non-GAAP? This varies, but we try to use GAAP whenever possible. Um, however, commonly, we do adjust for non-recurring gains or losses, discontinued operations, uh, and other special items. Um, each stock is looked at individually and our analysts decide which figures to display in the presentation. Um, question two. Oh, we just got one come in. Um, how often is the database updated? Um, a lot of information is updated daily, like pricing and PEs, dividend yields, et cetera. Um, the product itself comes out once a week. New reports come out each week. Uh, the ranking systems are run each week. Um, and it's every single week of the year. Uh, we never take off. Uh, another question. Does the Value Line Investment Survey still come in print? Um, yes, uh, we still have uh, the traditional print product. Um, many of you might be familiar with uh, the green binders that you used to see um, at the library or other institutions. Um, they are still available. Um, it includes a lot of the information we went over today. However, our website does provide more information in a more timely fashion. Uh, next question, uh, do you provide research on ETFs? Um, yes, um, we have an ETF product. Um, it's a really terrific ETF screener and provides um, other information. We're also soon launching a new product, um, which will be called Value Line Select ETF. Um, in which we will provide our top ETF pick each month, so 12 recommendations a year. Um, we're going to be launching that um, probably in the next few weeks. So um, if you'd like to check that out and uh, get a sample, uh, please call 1-800-VALUE-LINE. Okay, uh, there's a question about libraries. Um, I do not have a list of what libraries carry value line. Um, however, if you send um, Value Line an email or call and give them uh, your zip code, I'm sure they can provide you with what's close by. Uh, another question, uh, do you cover Canadian stocks? Uh, yes, uh, as I mentioned in my uh, presentation, we cover stocks on the Toronto Exchange, 
Um, and we also cover Canadian stocks that are dual listed, which is very popular, um, on the New York Stock Exchange or NASDAQ. Um, last time I checked, I believe we cover around 60 or 70 Canadian companies. Um, when we decide um, what to cover, meaning the Toronto ticker or the, uh, the New York Stock Exchange ticker, the NASDAQ ticker, uh, we typically simply look at trading volume. If more shares trade on Toronto, we're going to cover that stock. It's more interest. Um, oh, here's a question about the ETF product. Uh, is it based on value line data? Um, yes. Um, we use a lot of, since we cover 1,700 stocks, we use a lot of that data uh, to pick ETFs. You know, if there's a particular uh, group of stocks, particular maybe in one industry, uh, that all look good, maybe we will recommend an ETF that uh, represents that industry. Um, do you have an app is a question. Um, we do have a mobile site. Um, if you go to valuelines.com from, uh, from your phone, um, uh, also uh, valuelines.com uh, and our reports look uh, quite nice on a, uh, on a tablet as well. Okay, uh, next question. Uh, suppose I wanted to screen for stocks with the greatest risk-adjusted total return. How would I do that with the value line screener? All right, well, let's, uh, let's go back to the screener. For total returns, you would use this field right here, projected three to five year percent annual total return. And this will give you the list in order from Obviously, companies we think that are going to uh, decline in price uh, or total return over three to five years out to the highest. Uh, oftentimes, I see a discounted offering for year one, but does not say what happens after year one. Does pricing, pricing revert back to, to full subscription pricing? Um, that would that depend. That depends on uh, which offer uh, you have received, but. Uh, we usually have an introductory offer to encourage uh, customers to uh, use the product, and then um, there's always an advanced renewal uh, pricing. So if you get in early, you will hold your price um, on the first renewal effort, and then it reverts to our standard retail um, price. All right. Thank you. Uh, that was our marketing director. Um, Next question, are dividends for ADRs adjusted for home country taxes? Uh, yes, they are. Um, if it's an ADR, our financial presentation tends to be uh, in U.S. dollars, so we show the dividends in U.S. dollars, even though obviously they might be paid in pounds or euros, et cetera. Um, let me just go through the list one more time. I think – oh. One more question. How can value line best be used for sell signal on holdings? Um, actually, we do, we do quite a bit of that. Um, I mentioned the model portfolios earlier. Um, each week those portfolios are updated, and the manager informs the, uh, the readers which stocks are bought and sold that week. Um, the monthly products, um, sell and dividend income and growth, um, the portfolio holdings, when there's a sell, we contact the subscribers by uh, phone or email. It's user choice. Um, we also have a tool called the Alerts Hub, and you can put information in here. That, so, for instance, I can just create one. Let's say so we're talking about CVS today. I can set up an alert for when the stock rises above or falls below. So as you can see, CVS is around $80. Let's say I was only interested if it, uh, if it drops to 75. I can then set up that alert. And when and if that event happens, it will send me an email. Um, you can also use our ranking system, uh, as I mentioned. Um, Stocks are ranked one to five, with one being the best, um, two being above average, three being neutral, and four and five being below average. Those are stocks we think uh, are going to lag 
the market over the next six to 12 months. So you can use the rank as a sell signal if it drops to four or five. So uh, how do you get to the actively managed portfolios? Um, I apologize. I know I stumbled with that for a little bit. Um, but they're all uh, within our selection and opinion newsletter, which comes out weekly. Um, and it's right from the dashboard. Okay, uh, one more question. Um, someone's asking for a, a more robust portfolio tool that would allow you to import your holdings from brokerages and customize displays. Um, that's actually something we've looked into recently. Um, I wish I could tell you it's going to happen in the near term, um, but that is an enhancement we are considering at this time. Someone's asking if the link of the recording presentation will be available. Uh, yes, we will post it on our site as well as on our YouTube channel uh, within the next 24 hours. Um, that seems to be all the questions. Um, if I missed one, I apologize. Um, if you'd like to email me after the presentation with your question, uh, my email address is igenler at valueline.com. That's I-G-E-N-D-L-E-R at valueline.com. Um, I hope you all found this presentation helpful and interesting. Um, thank you very much and take care.